I am at the Audubon Center at Debs Park. I got trees in front of me, in back of me, on the left and right. Beautiful flowers blooming. The sun is sunning. Okay guys, time for a confession. I don't hike. I know, I know. I live in LA, I'm from LA, but outside the social hangout at the beach, I'm more of a city girl. The outdoors, it's just not my thing. But as you know by now, this show is about what makes LA special and helping you explore it all. You're listening to How to LA from Elias Studios. I'm your host, Brian De Los Santos. Today, I'm going on a hike, and you're coming with me. I'm out here wearing black sweats, a black tee, and a bright ass green jacket. It's okay, as long as you've got some comfy shoes and a water bottle and a hat. Oh, we got it. We, we, we yes, we're ready for this. That's Maricela Rosales, Marcy for short. She's an associate director for the Conservation's Lands Foundation, and she knows Debs Park like the back of her hand. There's, I think, like 143 different species of birds here. There's signs around the visitor center that lists all the different animals that live here. Desert cottontails, coyotes, bobcats, California ground squirrels, gopher snakes, western fence lizards. And then there's the plants. Deer grass, tayon, laurel sumac. Purple, Again, grass, we're in the city. Berry, the 110 is right California there. Fuchsia. Sticky monkey flower, I like that one. Coffee berry, elderberry, white sage, and mugwort. Mm-hmm. Smells great, doesn't it? Oh yeah, I smell that walking. I'm like, oh, I could hang out here often, you know. I love LA because of its unique spaces. And in between it are parks. Deb's Park, for me, this is my favorite place to go. And I like that they've done so much restoration work here that more people are coming and using these spaces because the other side of this park is like soccer fields and basketball courts. This feels like we're out in the mountains. It kind of helps you stay close to home, but far enough where you can just go, ah. All right, quick note. The reason we're in Debs Park today is because of you, our audience. I may not be an outdoorsy person, but we know some of you are. Before we launch this podcast, we asked you to share your favorite outdoor places in LA. There were so many responses, and this was one of them. FYI, we will try to hit all the places you noted, so keep the ideas coming. All right, back to the show. We're in one corner of Deb's Park. Marcy's like pointing at the map, but I noticed she wasn't actually reading it. There's the Butterfly Loop Trail, then there's the Scrub J Trail. She's got this place memorized. Like, I was a little nervous this morning, but I think I'm all right. I'm in good hands. Oh, it's getting hot. We're finally hitting a trail trail. We just left the center of the Audubon Center. (laughs) Just because we were on the trail didn't mean that the nature lesson was over. So I think this is white sage. Can I smell it? You can smell it and you can also rub the leaf and then smell your hand. Oh my god, that's delicious. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't eat it, right? But oh, This is lavender, right? This is lavender. Out here, it just feels different. I went to the local park and the beach as a kid, but living in the middle of the city, I wasn't really exposed to all this nature that surrounds us. I mean, I didn't know Runyon Canyon existed until I was like 22. Marcy says it was similar for her. Growing up for myself, I'm from Los Angeles. I lived in Koreatown. We had a backyard and we had a lot of fruits and vegetables. To me, that was nature, but I learned that later on in life, rather than seeing that as an opportunity to explore. Why does it matter for people to get outdoors? Sorry, I'm like, I'm trying to process because there's so many ways that I can answer this. She got this reflective look on her face and looked around and took in all the nature around us. The trees, a light breeze, the beautiful smells, all that good stuff. How can I say this? We're not separate from nature. We are nature, and nature is not separate from us. Climate change is happening, and the impact to green spaces, it hurts me because this is how we keep air quality better than how it was before. This is how we keep wildlife still living in the places that they call home. And then also mental health and just peace and quiet and being away from concrete jungle or wherever they reside, 
or you're going on a date with somebody or you're going to be out with friends and you're just able to be somewhere where it's not so busy. It's like nature busy. You know, birds are flying, bugs are bugging, you know, but it's like you are here. As you can probably tell, Marcy's whole mission is to get people outside. And she's done a lot of advocacy work with organizations like Latino Outdoors. They teach everyone from little kids to abuelitas how to get outside in a sustainable way. I'm always thinking about what's the best ways that I can help the community and then just having those aha moments with them. Like this reminds me of my childhood in Mexico or in Guatemala, Salvador. The access barrier slowly but surely is becoming less and less. Now you're starting to see a shift in communities like Deb's Park is in my backyard. Let me go check it out. Running up there? You want to run up there? Yeah. Run, go! Ah! Yes! We made it! We finally made it to the top of one of the hills. And you can see downtown from here. There's a pretty big tree. It has really nice shade and it has a big old a one-person swing. They're like fellow city girls just hanging out with a dog. How long did it take you to get up here? From that side? Yeah. Like five minutes. Oh. <laughs> we met Josie and Rosa Lee, two childhood friends from East LA who love to spend their free time outdoors. Go to Elysian Park and Griffith Park because then you have like the mansions and stuff and then you have like what I can relate to. You see like palateros and all that. You know, you see more of the Mexicans on one side. I don't know. I think LA is really diverse. What is your favorite thing about LA? My people, you know, feeling like there's no place like home. I would just say East Los Angeles, period. Like she said, there's no place like home. <laughs> East Los Angeles, that's home. Honestly, seeing these two Latinas enjoying their day off on a swing under a tree at the top of a hike overlooking the downtown skyline, that was the moment it clicked for me. I mean, if they made time to come out here and enjoy it, so can I. You can get to the outdoors in L.A. We came to Deb's Park because I'm not an outdoors person. I'm more of a city girl, I say. Yes, you have to worry about transportation, how to get there. But what is special to me is that there's an effort to conserve all this, to make it a space for people to enjoy it, but also for the animals to just be animals. The takeaway for me is everyone can enjoy the outdoors, but yes, there is work behind it to conserve it, to treasure it, to explore it, even just the smell. I kind of had a bad morning and I'm like driving up, putting on my zizza songs because I was like going through it. And then I opened the door to the car and it just even the fresh air took me to another world. And I'm like, oh, I'm in L.A. still. To me, this is L.A. We got the cars, we got the nature, we got the sun. Okay, as you probably can guess, I'm starving by now. So I'm going to change out of my hiking shoes and go get some food. Thanks to Marcy Rosales for taking me outside. Our producers are Evan Jacoby and Caroline Champlin. Our fall intern is Olive Bieni. Chris Farias runs our social media. Check us out on Instagram at Elias Pigs and on TikTok at Elias Vids. Hasmik Pagosian engineers the show. Our theme music is by Donald Paz. Megan Larson is our executive producer. Shana Naomi Crockmall is the vice president of Elias Studios. I'm your host, Brian De Los Santos. Catch us Tuesdays through Thursdays wherever you get your podcasts. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. This program is made possible in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. Catch y'all next week.